Hello and welcome everybody to our webinar quality assurance with Workpoint 365. So we are very happy to see you all here and hope you will enjoy the webinar and hopefully learn a few things of course. My name is Florian Neuholt and I will guide you through this webinar today. So first of all, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to put them into the Q&A's. Um, I will promise you I will have an eye on this and um, we prepared also a few minutes after the presentation for the answers, of course. So today our presenter will be Asker Stephenson, our channel sales director and partner of Workpoint. Um, so I hope Asker is ready in Copenhagen and we, we can start with the great presentation. We cannot hear you Asker, but this is no problem. Now we can. No, I'm we nodding cannot, very, very yeah. loud. Thank you. Now, now we can he hear you um, and I will share your presentation if you can share it to me. Certainly. I think we should be there. Perfect. <coughs> so good luck and have fun. Thank you very much and welcome in Vigan, everybody once again. <coughs> Pardon me. Today is uh, about uh, Management systems or QA management in uh, in Workpoint 365. Uh, for those of you who don't know anything about us, uh, just a brief introduction. And those of you who have attended webinars before, please bear with us for a few minutes. We are a Danish software company, uh, been around for over 20 years, and we have been focusing on building uh, smart business applications in uh, the Microsoft platform for all those years mainly. Uh, today, we are a full-blown software company operating uh, almost primarily in the Microsoft 365 cloud. We do have still a, a bit on-premise, but as you know, the world is moving to the cloud. We work with international partners, uh, both um, several European countries and also a few abroad. Some of our customers, uh, this slide is mainly to give you an idea that we span over several uh, different industries, banking, production, manufacturing, uh, logistics, even NGOs and public sector we're, we're in. So we can span quite a bit. Uh, today is, as I said, focused on how you can use WorkPoint for QA solutions. But uh, <clears throat> what, the, what these... Um, what these customers uh, often have in common is that clearly they are on the Microsoft 365 uh, strategy. They are working with Microsoft 365 and, and trying to get the most out of that platform. Uh, they typically need business solutions of every kind. That could be for case management projects, uh, human resource, QA, contract legal, anything else that involves uh, process support, uh, a lot of document management. Typically, our customers are information and knowledge heavy. So if you uh, can nod to these things, you're probably uh, going to have some benefit out of, of looking at what Workpoint can do. Workpoint management system. Some people ask questions. Uh, why don't we? Why is it not called QA management system? Uh, you can use both terms. We've chosen to say management system because it spans quite uh, quite broad in terms of managing your whole business process environment in your organization. At least that's the setup we have uh, we have developed for this. It is not to say that when I'm what I'm going to show you is something that you will have to. Uh, to implement in full, you can take uh, out parts because reinventing your whole organization and the whole way of working with processes can be a big, a, a big chunk. <clears throat> but it's uh, it's possible to um, to take parts and start uh, smaller than than the full the full Monty, so to say. But let's uh, let's have a look. Um, Workpoint 365 management system uh, often. People, when they talk about QA, they're thinking about a handbook, uh, quality manual, quality handbook, uh, lots of names for this. Um, and that is certainly an important part, but that's not uh, the whole thing. If you go back some decades, uh, a handbook was paper based, it was sitting on a shelf, and people could look up uh, what was, uh, what was, um, uh, what, how do you suppose, how, how are you supposed to do a specific job, or what kind of requirements do they have for quality, et cetera. Later on, people started moving this online and it became uh, became something about business processes and looking up specific guidelines. 
uh, in a, typically in a flow uh, or, or simple chart. We've tried to take it a, a little step further because we, we believe that it's not just about being able to uh, pr have some documents you can manage in, in, in a handbook. It's just as much as about continuous improvement of your whole business. So because behind the, the, the quality manual, there's a lot of documentation work and a lot of, a lot of uh, business process descriptions. So we have decided that in, in order to make this a continuous improvement, you need to have a system that allows you to work continuously with your improving your business processes and also picking up all of those errors that might occur or experience that people get uh, being able to record that and have that to feed into the into the business process uh, description. Of course, it does not uh, exclude the, the handbook. That also needs to be there. So we also included a quite an easy to use online handbook for publishing all that documentation. So that's that's kind of the the overall thinking behind our our very short, of course, about, about uh, behind our solution. Um, when you see the solution, there will be uh, there's typically two ways to enter a management system such as this, and uh, the primary user would be what we have chosen to call the standard user. That just any employee in your organization, basically that need to view uh, something about a process or documentation around how to do a job or how to what what kind of, of quality um, guidelines there is so they they would be far the most uh, the the, the uh, most users in, in the organization and then we have the management users they would have uh, access to the full system being able to manage and edit and publish documents and, and files and all uh, and the information about uh, the processes, uh, audits, nonconformities, etc. So the um, the uh, the first user, the manager user, will will have a limited uh, access to the system and and the uh, uh, the sorry the standard users and the management users will have access to to pretty much everything. As I'm today logging on as a management uh, user, I'll I'll have access to everything. Uh, I will kind of exemplify where where the average user will see and not see uh, when I go through this. So let's um, see if we can uh, dig up a demo here. This would be my front page for my web-based uh, uh, interface. So what we're looking at is uh, those of you who have seen WorkPoint before will, will recognize some of the things, but for those that hasn't, I'm just going to run through a little bit of navigation and, and basic stuff. WorkPoint is a modular system, so it's made up by business modules, as we call them, and uh, clicking on the top left, you are able to see uh, that we have here four business modules in the solution. And for each of them, I can I can click here and I can drill down in various views, of in this case business processes we also have audits kpis and nonconformities on the front page i can also see some uh, buttons up here where i can typically create a new elements new content in this case new business process new conformity i have more here i can create documents and other things uh, these buttons will change depending on where i where i am uh, they're context sensitive i also have a search feature uh, in this specific solution, we have kind of some built-in some search features around, uh, but there are always a global search feature where I can search for uh, either documents or or uh, elements in the system, being audits, being nonconformities in the in the various uh, modules. So this is the basic navigation uh, that you can uh, take from from the top. Then on the left, we have some shortcuts uh, to various elements in the system and also on the front page I have some buttons here that will bring me straight to in this case the handbook nonconformities KBIs business processes and audits as I said I'm accessing this with with all the rights all the elements is available to me for the uh, the average user would typically only see uh, these two or three lists here where I have access to the handbook and uh, uh, probably also being able to uh, to record a nonconformity that I can see here, uh, create a nonconformity. 
I'll get back to what nonconformity is, is for those of you who are not familiar with it. But let's start with uh, accessing this as a as a as a regular user. I'm am working in somewhere in my organization, and I have the need to check something, uh, some description about what and how a process should be done. So I will enter my my handbook. This view will show me the full uh, the full uh, quality handbook. And as you can see, there are a lot of documents here. These would in principle be the full elements. There could be hundreds, even thousands of documents. Typically, they will all be PDFs. Now we have some, some Word files, but this is a demo setup. So just imagine they're all PDFs. Uh, of course, it's, it can be hard to find out wh what, where do I look. So one thing you can of course do is you can always search, do a free text search, which may bring you uh, something, but an easier way would probably be to use the drill down feature here. This is a metadata based drill down feature, so it's fully configurable to suit any need that you may have. And I'll give an example of that in a minute. Uh, for this, let's assume I'm a user. I want to go for looking for something registered in my core process. So I'll look at, I'm drilling down into my core process and I can see, okay, now we have already the list of, of documents is shortened a bit and I'm, I'm going to go further. I work in development, so I'll go one step further. And now I have a very, very short list of documents. So this is very easy for me to find. If I was uh, going in, say, in operations, I would have a different list. And if you say now we have we have narrowed it down, I'm working in the operations, or um, I'm just going to do a quick search for a specific document, and I will now get my uh, list very briefly. So it's very easy to for the users to uh, to find what they're looking for. And if I want to just open the document, I can simply click on my on my document and I have a preview here and I can see the operation procedure for aircon maintenance. So this is the way I can of course open this document in full. But for for the for the user needing to look something up, he will simply drill down or he will do a free text search. <clears throat> now as I said, this handbook uh, uh, approach is, is fully configurable and, and you can imagine that in some organizations it would be necessary to have more than just one handbook. Uh, there could be multiple areas or organization units or other things where you need to have specific uh, things. So we've just done an example here and say we have actually added another handbook here. So let's assume we are working in a project uh, focused business and here we have now Clicking down, I now have my my project handbook. My project is is following specific stages. So I have initiation, I have planning, I have execution, I have closure, and delivery. So each of these can again be uh, each of these um, stages can have documents uh, assigned to them. So I can quickly drill down on initiation and find the documents I need for uh, doing my work correctly during initiation. Now there's very limited uh, data element here, so probably not going to show a lot, but you get the idea that when you drill down and you get the same um, the same approach as before, it's just simply a different uh, environment, it's different metadata, it's a different setup for a different purpose. So you can have one or more uh, handbooks in our system this way. So jumping back, as the average user, I would uh, I would work with my handbook, and I would uh, be able to look up and find um, uh, work uh, work description, process description, that kind of stuff. Now, <clears throat> in order to make sure that we can continue to improve, apart from being able to describe a business process, it's just as easy to find out when something is not good. Nonconformity is, is, is the term we use here, and this is used for uh, the situation where somebody discovers that something could be done better. That means it could be uh, uh, even a, a factory um, floor worker realizing that the welding procedure could be done smarter, or for some reason they are prone for mistakes. He could simply record a nonconformity by going to uh, the create nonconformity filling the filling in the um, this uh, form which will appear here and say okay i have uh, realized that there we could do something here there's a 
title, there's a location where this happens, uh, there is a type of nonconformity, is it a process, is it a product, is it a system, uh, what is it, what, what detail can I put in, uh, what caused this and what action could be taken. Uh, of course, these uh, these elements can be adapted to to suit your specific needs. This is just as we've designed it in the first place, but that's uh, configurable. And the whole the whole idea is that this gives everybody in the organization the ability to record a suggestion. It's a suggestion box basically. Here is something we could do better. It could also be something that is implied by change of law. Let's assume that the European Union has. Uh, has created a, a new a new legislation and that real the, the the legal department in the organization realizes this will affect some of our processes they can also raise a nonconformity like that the general the, the bottom line is that all of the nonconformities will go into a big list when you have this list you have people that can go in uh, responsible for checking nonconformities and say we have all these nonconformities that's been re that's been recorded. We need to do something about them. What happens is that the persons responsible for monitoring nonconformities will go in, evaluate quickly what is this about, and assign uh, a person uh, and a process. So if this uh, is about something specific, a specific process, you will be you will be. Uh, you will you will be able to to rec um, sorry to um, assign this nonconformity to a specific business process. Then, where the business process people can then be uh, in charge of changing the business process description to make sure this uh, nonconformity is has taken care of. Now, the business processes is a different uh, element. So, when we're looking at business process we will see that we have business processes in preparation and we have active business process. Of course, there would be many more in a real life situation, but this is the working, this is the workspace for the business process um, description. So if I go to my paint application process here, which is in process, I'm now, I'm now looking at the workspace for uh, documenting our business process. A business process could be, a very large thing or it could be a smaller thing. It can be, as you know, uh, can be describing a, a lot of things and could be very, very heavy to document or it could be described by a single document, depending on what, what we're dealing with. If we just should go through this workspace from the beginning, we have here a uh, set of stages. Those familiar with WorkPoint will know how stages work, but basically you set up uh, a, a, a life cycle for what's your business process going to go through. So you have preparation, you have active, and you have in this case closed. When you're working with the preparation, you will start describing all the uh, the elements of the business process. What you can also see here is that this business process is actually assigned to some KPIs. So there are some 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 KPIs that uh, that should be met or or at least measured against. Um, we have here the open nonconformities, and that uh, ties into what I talked about before. Uh, in terms of nonconformity, uh, this somebody has recorded there is a bad assembly and finish. So this is one of the nonconformities from the list I showed you before that has been assigned to this specific business process. It has been assigned a responsible. And uh, if I want to see more detail of this business uh, nonconformity, I can click it and I can see some metadata. I could also go straight to the nonconformity to see more details. So in here we have more information about the uh, about the uh, uh, sorry about the nonconformity. You can also see if you go in here, you can see it it is related the other way to that process I just came from. But in here we can have more information about the about the nonconformity, including a risk could be. Uh, there could be recorded risk about this because it potentially could be a very uh, serious matter. We'll jump back to the business process. So the open on conformity, of course, will trigger that we need to do something before before we have taken care of uh, and correcting whatever this is about. We we can't close this one down. So now the person responsible for the nonconformity has assigned it to us working on this specific business process. So we will take care of that. 
we could say it will require a new description. So if I say in uh, describing my business process, I have some documents. Those documents are the one that will eventually go out and end up in the, in the quality manual, as we saw before. I have two lists of documents in here. I have working document and published documents. Self-explanatory almost, I'd say published documents are the ones that goes into the, uh, to the manual. If I go to my working documents, I will see I have here a list of, of uh, procedures, description and, and other things. Uh, in this case, we could choose to either update uh, an existing one, there will there will be a review process. Of course, there will, if we if we update something, there might be an approval process with some sub, some subject matter experts in the organization, or maybe even third party experts would would have to review that this process is is good and right before we can publish it. When we are eventually are happy with our process description, we can send it to uh, publish. So this way, we can say we can both have a review and approval flow. And we can also uh, publish it when we're done with with the um, with the description. <clears throat> we can also have this uh, document audited. I'll get back to how audit works in in a few minutes. Basically, there are a number of things here. Um, if we are very happy with this uh, document and we really think this should be uh, forming a new template, we can also copy the document to our template library. Now. We can also, uh, instead of updating the existing, we can create a new uh, process description. WorkPoint has, uh, as some of you may know, a document template library that uh, allows me to pick a, a template and generate a document uh, based on that. So if we assume that we require a new uh, process description, we will click the document button and we will um, a name. We will choose where to store it. It won't go to the de published document, it will default to the document, which is good. That's where we are. We can choose folders if we want. We don't want to do anything like that, but we will pick a document template. Here we have three types of templates because now we're looking at templates only relevant for documenting uh, business processes. So let's say it's a process description. We get a preview where we can see that, hopefully, preview seems to have halted. Let's see if we can get it to wake up. That's one preview. That's another preview. So here is uh, my preview. I can see there's a business process tag. So the system will take will take information from my uh, business process site, uh, the name and the title, etc., and add this to the to the to the uh, to this template. So I'll just check. Yes, this is the template I want. Clicking save and edit will then. That is the wrong name, so I have to go back and say. I have to give it another name. Must have done a demo before. Yeah, OK, that was a mistake. Now I take the wrong button. Anyway, the document will be created. In this case, it just uh, I missed the template, so it's going to be an empty one. But let's open that. So when I have when I have my description made here, I can then go into the to the process we talked about before, finishing the document and having it um, reviewed and approved and eventually published. So when I have done when I've finished with this process, I may go back to my um, to my site here and say now we have we have completed our uh, new description and that means that we can now go and say report on this uh, nonconformity that we have done uh, we have finished we have finished the and uh, finished the description and that means that we can now close this nonconformity which is currently I believe if we go to it. In the stage of analysis. So eventually, when I've done all this stuff, uh, we have uh, we can go down and and end, end up with the, with the closed uh, nonconformity. In that case, we're all we're all happy because we have now recorded the nonconformity. We have taken action to update our business process, and then we can finish and close down our uh, our nonconformity. 
the handbook will then be updated with a new uh, with a new process description which we just created before. Now, finally, we have uh, audits. Uh, some organizations are ISO certified and they know all about when uh, there's a there's a, a certifying body coming out to review them, to audit them, to make sure that they live up to the ISO whatever uh, certification. But audits can also be done internally in the organization. Our audit module is um, similar to the other uh, setup where we have upcoming audits, planned audits. We have uh, supply audits, we have some active audits. Basically, let's go and have a look at one of them. Basically, an audit will be a site where we have a set of stages we go through. So when we plan an audit, we go into the preparation. Here is where we do uh, where we do the um, all the paperwork uh, to, to be ready to go and audit, whether that's a supply audit, whether it's an audit of a single process or maybe a department or a production plant, uh, that's, uh, that's something you decide. When you create the audit, you decide what is it we're going to audit here. After doing the preparation, we will go into the execution stage, and that's when we go and do the active audit, where we do recording of uh, all the things that we need to check. We can do audits uh, checklist in various ways. We can either have them as documents, or you could have them as, as underlying lists in your site, uh, where you have uh, individual tasks for all the checkings and you can record all the answers, all the, all the findings. And of course, this is also where nonconformities comes in play. Because when you, during an audit, find something that is, uh, that is not correct, you will then uh, go in and, and create a nonconformity. As you can see, we have here some nonconformities that has been found during this um, audit. And that again feeds into that when you finish your, your, uh, your audit, you need to get your, non before you finish your audit, you need to get your nonconformities uh, completed and, and uh, rectify what is wrong. That could be uh, simple things or it could be more, uh, uh, serious things that would require an update of your business process. And that ties into what we just saw before. You can go back to your, you can, re, you can relate these to specific business processes and you can then have your business process people go in and complete, uh, complete review, review and, and change a description or, or documentation on a business process. So that is why this is how audits are tied up into the, the whole continuous improvement thinking of, of this solution. So jumping back, just summing up, I guess I know there was a lot of information here in a very short time and it didn't click uh, click the right, the wrong button, uh, the document didn't help. But anyway, um, we have the ability to create handbooks, uh, one or more handbooks with an easy navigation. You can have these handbooks created by uh, uh, describing all your business process or all your guidelines. Uh, and then publish them out to the handbooks. <clears throat> During all of this, you can have all of your employees create nonconformities when something can be improved or is plain wrong, and that can tie into improving the business process. At the same time, you can have, you can do audits of your various sites or business process, production facilities, suppliers even, uh, and that again will um, potentially find things that can be improved, again feeding into improving business process which eventually will find a way out into your uh, handbook description. And all of this can, of course, be tied up into uh, any um, ISO certifications or other certifications that you are uh, or your organization has. Needless to say, this is also uh, connected to our uh, WorkPoint Express. So if I go to my, my WorkPoint uh, and my Outlook, I have here my WorkPoint Express and I can see my full solution here with my business processes, with my audits, with my KBI. So a user would also be able to create uh, business process, nonconformities, et cetera, if I'm in here, or I could uh, I could go in here and work with my documents or drag and drop emails as, uh, as is possible with, with WorkPoint Express. And of course, we can integrate this as well with Microsoft 
teams. So if you have, uh, if you work a lot with teams, you could just as well work from your from teams with your documents in the business application uh, process. I think that mostly concludes the uh, walkthrough of today. As I said, fairly quickly uh, run through of a fairly large solution. We're more than happy to have a, a more detailed discussion with you. And um, if you're interested, reach out to us or to our partners. If you want to see some of our reference cases, we have links to them here. You can follow us on LinkedIn. And further information is available here as well. I don't know if there has been written any um, questions during this. Uh, I will stop presenting and go to. I'm I'm back, Oscar, and thank you. thank you very much for your presentation. I think everybody saw that it is quite easy to to work in this management solution with our with our solution. So we have no questions. This is. A very good sign, Eska, because <laughs> then then everybody understood and um, can follow you in your presentation. Like Eska said before, if you have any question or something else, um, you can also contact us directly or go on the homepage. Um, we have there our our customer cases as well, so you can reach us, of course, on this side as well. If I will wait a little bit um, until this. I will do something for, for other things. For example, I would say we have also next time another very, very interesting webinar. On the 2nd of December, we have the um, template handling with Workpoint 365 webinar. And on Thursday, the 9th of December, we will have the uh, uh, webinar, which is very interesting with Workpoint on top of SharePoint. Um, there we will see or we will show which possibilities we um, offer on top of SharePoint. So I think that's very interesting topics. And um, also I want to um, give you another interesting channel to the hand so you can find our, our, our YouTube channel. So we worked a lot to give our YouTube channel, I would say a little bit of facelifting. Um, and we think we, we created very interesting content. So for example, um, in in case of this webinar, we also had a tip and trick how you find process related documents in your um, handbook, what what Aska also showed. So I think it's very interesting. If you're interested, jump in and subscribe if you want to get more Workpoint news. So we have still no questions. Um, as I said, you can um, contact us if you want. Please check out our homepage. If you have any questions, suggestions, ideas or problems, um, you can always get in contact with us and um, we try to solve every problem. If there is nothing else, um, I would say thank you very much, Eska, as well um, for the presentation. It was a pleasure and also thank you to join the webinar and I hope we see you on the 2nd of December of the template handling with Workpoint 365. Have a nice day and bye. <laughs>